what will you do to end mass incarceration? And this will start down, uh, we'll start Jesse, go for it. It's a great question, I've asked that. I think the first thing we need to do is understand really what, what is happening. Uh, you, you need somebody who understands that there's a generation of, of young African American men with a percentage far too many in jail. And you need to understand that there is an economic incentive with this privatization of prisons that every incentive is working against us to address this problem. So step one is figure out a way to fight these privatization of jails. Step two is just understand the historic inequities between some of our law enforcement agencies and some of our communities, especially our communities of color. My father has been a public defender in Maryland for my entire life. And you can imagine the race, gender, and age of his 98% of his clients. That, that's what I have learned at the dinner table. My wife served as a police officer in Washington, D.C. as an African-American city with an African-American police force. My wife happens to be white. It's a different story in Baltimore than it is D.C., but you have to understand it's certainly a different story in Bel Air as it is Salisbury. You talk about something as simple as the 287G program that looks different in Bel Air as it does in and in Cambridge or Easton or Salisbury. The best thing we can do is find representatives who don't care about this issue at all, who, who deny the existence of this issue as a problem. We have one here in our district. Andy Harris is never even going to entertain that this is a problem, much less do anything about it. I do not pretend to have all the answers on this topic. It is very difficult for me to get hopeful about how we can make reform on this topic, because I just don't see a lot of light in the next two years. But I can tell you the first step. Find somebody like Andy Harris, who's never going to give this even a thought or entertainment, much less try to fix it, and send folks in where their hearts are in the right place and understand where to start. The first place to start is with this privatization of prisons. Thank you. So I have been in the arena, and I know what it's like. The U.S. prison population is now 2.2 million. That has, that has increased 500% in the last 40 years, but there hasn't been any corresponding increase in the crime rate. We incarcerate more people than any other nation on earth. We have 5% of the world's population. We incarcerate 25% of the people in prison throughout the world, and that includes China. Federal imprisonment is up 15% in the last 10 years, while state rates have gone down 4%. 32 states have reduced crime and imprisonment over the last five years. What can we do about it? First of all, we can take marijuana off the Schedule One drug <laughs> control dangerous substance. It never belonged there in the first place, and it needs to get removed. We can decriminalize possession of small amounts of marijuana. We can create, um, we can treat drug addiction and the drug problem as a public health crisis, which is what it is. It's not a criminal justice crisis. 54% of folks in prison today are either in there for drug-related offenses or immigration offenses. Think of that. It's not right, it's disproportionate it's a disproportionate impact on communities of color. The, the criminalization of marijuana has been used to create mass incarceration. Uh, and we need to undo it. We need to, not only for the social reasons, but for all the reasons that make this country what it needs to become. We need to have justice equal for all. Thanks. good question to go after these two guys on. Um, they just said most of what I would have said, which maybe gives me an opportunity. Yes, we need to fight back against privatized prisons. Nobody should be prof profiting by incarcerating our citizens. It is a fundamental misalignment of profit motive. Anywhere we see that occurring, we should end it. Um, and then I agree that we need to legalize marijuana. People are being incarcerated for no reason over this. And the states that have done so not only have budget surpluses, but they also have lower rates of 
opioid-related deaths. And we, again, I agree that we need to treat the opioid crisis like a public health issue. And we need to give it the attention that it deserves. So when you declare it a crisis, you need to actually fund it. And, uh, and it shouldn't be treated as a criminal issue. That impacts a lot of people. But I'd like to expand on what Mike was saying about it disproportionately impacting on communities of color. We need to retrain our police forces because incarceration starts with arrests. And communities of color are seeing higher arrest rates for the same crimes that the police would maybe let somebody else walk off with that they wouldn't do anything about it. And you know what, I would like to give a shout out to Aravinda for standing up and making sure that people in our own police force and community were addressing that problem. Thank you. Thank you. So legalizing marijuana is an easy answer, a problem that clearly exists today, um, but perhaps the ones that maybe the other candidates don't recognize is we also in this election have an opportunity to elect state's attorneys who believe that there is a chance to reform first-time offenders. So it's not just us and new legislation, but it could be the very people who are in place to prosecute these individuals to have a mentality that says, Hey, rough start. Let's give them an opportunity to make things better. And let's put programs in place that they can enable themselves, enable these offenders to find another way out. Perhaps scare them straight, if you will. The judges, in the same respect, also are handicapped. They have certain circumstances where they have mandatory minimum sentences that they can't get around. Now, a lot of this stuff won't occur at the federal level. It'll happen within the state level. So maybe we won't have the answer or the ability to impact it directly. But when you have a minimum sentence that says somebody's stuck for 10 years in jail because of what may be considered a minor felony in many of our eyes, that creates a problem. That puts them in an environment for more longer than their entire education of one where they learn worse things rather than better things. Finally, I'm going to take a moment to recognize that we own the problem. Between our parenting skills and our education system, we have a responsibility to give these people who find themselves in trouble young an opportunity to go out in the world and make a difference and tell them that they can make a difference in the world doing the positive things and not taking the easy road out. We all have to step up. If we see somebody behaving in a poor way in town, we should say something and not be quiet and be afraid that they're going to come back at us. We have to change in order for our society to change as well, and we're going to have to hold them accountable earlier to avoid a lot of these problems that we see in the future. Thank you. So, uh, we, touched, we touched some health care uh, questions before. This one is specific uh, to uh, drug prices. 